So many times college and professional players are experiencing a lot of the downside of baseball. And so the mind starts to go towards self-doubt, worry, anxiety. They may even cry themselves to sleep at night because the stresses are so great that they're gonna lose their place in the batting order. They're gonna lose their lineup. They're gonna be sitting on the bench. They're gonna let everybody down who's depending upon them. And the pressures can mount to a point where players will say, I'm just gonna quit this game. I, I don't uh, wanna play anymore. I'm just not good enough. And the fields of sports psychology in North America really got going in the early 70s, late 60s with a few key players and it, they help the player to consciously construct mental tools to cope with pressure in games. And those were the beginning stages of helping players to deal with stress. So they taught them breathing routines, they taught them uh, what to focus on, uh, look at the left field foul pole, it's always there and focus on that for a moment and so on. So they gave the players tools to deal with these stressful moments. But because of the development of neuroscience, which is the study of the brain, newer developments have been made in helping athletes to deal with these situations. And I'd like to explain those to you now. This is a newer field and it's called the field of neuroscience. And these are scientists who are able to study how the brain works. And this is developed because of our phenomenal advancements in computer and computer technology. So several scientists went to work on athletes and they put a cap on their head which picks up a number of uh, electrical signals so they can see which part of the brain is working and the nerve uh, impulses. And then they had the athlete perform a variety of functions. And what they observed by analyzing different athletes was very fascinating. Those athletes that were the best at their sport, so these are the top athletes, in competition used a different part in their brain than some of the other athletes on the team. Now the other athletes may have been physically more talented. That was interesting. But they were the athletes who would tend to somewhat underperform or the mind would interfere with their ability. So those lower athletes were using a different place in their brain than the top athletes. And that was fascinating because it opened up a whole new avenue of study as to what are, what's limiting the performance in these lower athletes, even though they might have been more gifted. And we have lots of examples of that. Derek Jeter was not the most gifted player that ever played in the Major League Baseball, but he was one of the most successful. And by observing this, they located different regions in the brain, and what each portion of that brain is responsible for. So now the challenge became if we can help the athlete to use the same parts of the brain in the big moments of the games that the top athletes do, then they would be able to perform at the same level as the top athletes and they would uh, lose the ability to be affected by the stress pressure response. And that is a major breakthrough for sport. You know, the last hundred years we've been spent on the body and training the body and body movement. I think the next hundred years are going to be spent on the mind because it's the mind that controls the body and the mind can also interfere with the body's beautiful fluid motion. And I think this is the area where developments are going to happen. And this is the area where it's been exciting for my learning and my ability to help players is because I help them to learn different areas of their brain and use those areas during the performance of their sport. And their consistency has gone up, their ability to play under pressure has increased, and they just, their love of the game 
their excitement and their enjoyment for playing this game has gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. 